Hello everybody, a very, very good afternoon to you and a very warm welcome to today's virtual church. We opened there with the wonderful uh, tune Corvedale, there's a wideness in God's mercy, with one or two extra verses thrown in for good measure just to um, enjoy this organ's dynamic contrast. We are, of course, in Alessandria, virtual Alessandria today, uh, the wonderful organ sampled by Piotr Grabowski. Um, and I really hope that we can explore all of the colours and timbres that this organ has to offer through the use of wonderful hymns like this. Uh, that was requested by Julian, who is one of our Patreons, so thank you very much, Julian, for requesting that. We're actually getting through quite um, a large backlog of requests today. These um, requests have come in over the past few weeks, and we're trying to catch up with everything, so you might be surprised to find your request in today, you, you probably forgot you made it all those weeks ago. But we have a good a selection today, so thank you very much for providing us with um, a really good, exciting selection of hymns. And organ music as well. The next hymn that we'll have is Thornbury. Thy hand, O God, has guided thy flock from age to age. And we'll actually only have four verses. So this is coming from Daniel Kubaki, so thank you Daniel for your request. Um, four verses, um, they're quite long. And um, it, it has a wonderful ending, doesn't it? Um, one faith, one Lord, when the, the tune holds on that A for five beats and then the harmony just repeats the, the last line of the verse, just for good measure. Thy hand, O God, has guided thy flock from age to age. Please do say hello in the chat. I know I can see a lot of you chatting already, but please do say hello. Please do say where you're from. Uh, the better uh, engagements that we get from you guys, the more chats we have, the more lively these virtual churches are. So feel free to um, just, I know you guys like talking about food, but let's limit, limit the food perhaps today. Let's talk about, I don't know, anything else. What have you been up to um, over the past week? And my favourite question is, of course, whereabouts in the world are you? Thy hand, O God, has guided.
think this is the organ out of all of the organs that I play, um, that when I play it, when I fire it up, having not played it for a few weeks, it's the only organ I think which really, I always forget how good it is. It just, I always think, um, you know, when I'm not playing it, when I'm playing another organ, I think Alessandria is, uh, it's a three manual, um, the washy acoustic, and it, it does the job well. But when I play it, I always think, this is so much better than I remember. Every time, I, I, every time. It, I think particularly in this uh, surround setup in here, it just sounds so good. Uh, it, I hope it's sounding good to you guys. Please let me know in the chat, is it sounding all right? It's a very different organ to Doodle Ange, isn't it, last night? Uh, that's a very uh, fiery French sort of um, uh, style. It is actually a, a voice in the French style, that organ. This one isn't, obviously, it's, um, it's an, an Italian organ. Uh, so it's nice to have an Italian organ. We have one English organ, a uh, relatively small organ, St. Mary Le Beau, uh, German organs such as uh, Gerlitz and the Silberman organ in Freiburg, uh, two very different organs indeed. Um, actually, another German organ by Piotr Grabowski coming uh, to the fleet, well, already in the fleet, um, but will be showcased on the channel soon. Uh, French, obviously, Caen and Nancy. Um, and we don't have any Spanish organs, and actually, we don't have yet any uh, American organs. So, Jerry, I know you did send me um, a link to a decent American organ, but perhaps we should add an organ like that to the fleet very soon. And the question is, then, what do I play on it? So you guys will have to let me know what organ you'd like to see on the channel. Okay, the next one we have is, um, has been requested by Corey. It is holy, 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 um, uh, Lord God Almighty. The tune is called Nicaea. And we will definitely have four verses, Chris, won't we, today? We won't have three, we'll have four verses. Um, I wouldn't dare play three verses. <laughs> um, this is the, 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 I've said this before, but this is the hymn which uh, I think was the first hymn that I, that I ever played because I have my original markings in here from when I was a teenager. Um, and so it's a sentimental hymn for me. Should we get on with it? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee.
It is a um, really beautiful hymn, isn't it? Um, thank you very much indeed, Corey, for requesting it. Um, so I just, the, the, you know, our, the tagline for virtual church is hymns, which you're getting a lot of, organ music, which you get some of, and chat, which you also get a lot of. Um, not everyone knows what the word waffle means. So I'm training people. I'm going to, it's my, it's our word here in Beauty and Sound, waffle. Hymns, organ music, and waffle. Um, so the next, I just thought about uh, something in, um, as, I was, as I was playing the last few hymns actually, um, that I wanted just to talk about. And it's, it's just something really that I've just, um, I'm holding the wrong hymn book. It's about um, watching and seeing people play and uh, being inspired by uh, their playing, by just their physical playing, watching their fingers, their hands, their feet, how they play and how they sort of control the console. And I was watching this, I've mentioned it, and some of you have actually gone away uh, to watch it, the Poulenc Organ Concerto uh, by, uh, played by Daniel Hyde at the first night of the BBC Proms. It's on BBC iPlayer, uh, the video you can watch and the audio is on BBC Sounds. I think actually if you're not in the UK you can watch BB listen to BBC Sounds. Don't know about iPlayer though. Uh, the iPlayer is the video version. And I was watching um, this and I just was, was watching Daniel Hyde play uh, the organ parts to the Poulenc organ concerto and um, this is the inspiration parts that I mentioned. He has this ability um, with his, he's very tall. Everything about Daniel Hyde is very big. He's massive, very ha big hands, very, very tall indeed. And he just had this wonderful technique with his hand. His hands just don't seem to move very much at all. I'm, I'm w watching my videos back and my hands move, you know, um, more so than I'd like. But his hands don't, they just stay very still. But yet his fingers just do all the right things. Never plays the wrong note never plays a wrong note. I'm sure he does, but I've never heard him. Um, I just made, made me think, actually, what you guys find, um, what do you find when watching people play? What do you find your greatest inspiration? What is it about someone's playing that you find really inspirational and want to take that away? Whether it's something that you've seen me do or any other performer online, I'd, I'd be really interested to know. So let me know in the chat what you find inspirational when watching people play. Okay, the next hymn is uh, We Sing of God, the mighty source of all things, the stupendous force on which all strength depends. Stupendous. It's not a word that you often get to sing in a hymn or any choral music, stupendous. The music is called Maudlin College by William Hayes and the words uh, by Christopher Smart. And the request has come in from Brook. So thank you very much. The hymn book we're using is the, the 1982 hymnal. This is the American hymn book and I should just draw your attention to the text on the screen on the lower left of the screen where Nala is um, currently um, sitting <laughs> and it draws your attention to next weekend the organ marathon where I am going to play the entire thing. The hymn book goes up to 720. The final hymn is, uh, for you Americans, it's your national anthem. So what a wonderful way to finish the organ marathon next week with the national anthem for you guys. It's gonna take two days to do, uh, so I'm gonna start it on Saturday next week. Um, UK time of one o'clock in the afternoon. I think that's fair because you Americans won't be up if I start at 10 in the morning. Uh, so I'll start middle of the afternoon and then go into, um, into the evening and I will do it over two days. So I'll start on Sunday at one o'clock UK time as well. So you need to check your local time zone, translate it into, into your local time zone. Okay, there are various websites that will do it. And I will put the placeholders on very soon. So please let, um, come and support me um, it is hopefully, fingers crossed, the final push, um, depending, depending on how generous you are and how successful the marathon is, it could potentially be the final push uh, to raise all of the funds required for our 
new organ. And it can't come soon enough because this organ, only minutes before we went live, was ciphering. And I, I shouted through to Caroline, is that one of the cats on the organ or is the organ ciphering? Alas, it was ciphering. So I've reset things. Hopefully it won't do it. But if it does do it, then you'll see what I'm talking about. So, okay. So Brooke, I don't know whether you're in with us, but let's have this hymn. We sing, um, we sing of God, the mighty source of all things. Great. Well, it's, really, it's good to have um, um, Caroline shouting out some of the things that you find inspiring um, by watching me. Thank you for your comments about pacing. Yes, pacing is um, something that I've, over the, over, I guess, comes from experience and, and um, comes from listening back and watching myself play, listening t to myself play. I've, I've, I've listened, um, I've recorded myself for years, um, ever since, long before, um, uh, B BIS, um, but I was recording myself um, when I was at Chester, so in the noughties, um, and recording myself play organ repertoire, um, accompanying, I used to record myself a company, because uh, I really wanted to make sure that I was getting the balance right, and I was, um, the art of, a, um, one of the cr crucial things that a good organist, um, a good liturgical accompanist will do is, uh, if required, um, because of the acoustic and the distance, is play ahead of the beat. Simply because if you play 
on the beat, the, the time it takes for this organ sound to travel into the building because of the distance of the pipes. The organ often sounds behind, that's what, and that's one of my um, pet hates when I listen to organists accompanying in these, um, where, you know, where, wherever you are. Um, and the organ is just constantly just a fraction behind the choir. It just really grates because it just pulls the tempo back and back and back. So that's one thing that I used to do is listen to recordings of myself accompanying in a live even song and just making sure that I was playing ahead enough and not pushing too far. I think tempo uh, is a part of that, listening back to, to, to one's self playing. It's a really eye opening or ear opening uh, with what you're doing with tempo, it's always the case that you will be playing faster than you think you are. Um, and sometimes when you're playing live and in the spur of the moment, if you think you're pa uh, playing painfully slow, often the tempo is about right. And also you need to play into the acoustic as well. One of the most important stops on any organ is the acoustic. In a vast acoustic like we are today, um, you can just afford to play around a little bit and use the acoustic to allow the organ to breathe. So, it, you know, it, that, that sort of thing um, comes from experience and it's a, it's a quick tip, really. If, if you want to work on your tempo and your control, listen back to yourself play. Now, the next thing I've got here is over one, two, three, four, five pages. And my organ simply is not big enough to hold five pages. How on earth am I going to do this? I wonder. I don't know. Um, I'll tell you what I'll have to do. I'll have to have... <laughs> right, let's just be really silly. Let's just use all of these candle holders to prop up the music. Is this going to work or is this going to just go horribly wrong? I say horribly wrong. It would be horribly wrong for me, but hilariously wrong for you, won't it? Uh, so one more page to go over. Oh, gosh. Right, so this is going to look utterly ridiculous, guys. So if you're looking for inspiration now, don't watch this. Don't get inspiration from this. So I don't know. You can see one copy there, but they're all over. Can I, if I put it on this camera. Let's hope there isn't a sudden gust of wind, and let's hope they're all in the right order as well. So this is, what is this? This is, I bind myself. Um, I bind, Caroline's missed out a word there. I didn't think that sounded right. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity uh, by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three. This is from King uh, Loudrup. You know, I think he's all the way up in Scotland, if I remember correctly. Now that bit of paper has already fallen over, so that. Shall I use a Lottie to prop it up? It is, by the way, as Andantino has already said, International Cat Day. We have two cats on the organ. They're wooden cats. Um, and our real cats are around somewhere. I don't know where they are. They're having a nap, actually, in, in the next room. So let's, enough waffle, enough arranging of musical sheets. Let's play I Bind Unto Myself Today. This is a wonderful tune arranged here by Charles Vila's Stanford. Let's play this for King Loudrup. Uh, everything's in the right order, yes. Here we go. Wish me luck. There you go. So that is one of the infamous ciphers that I'm talking about. And now that's happened, I've lost control of all of my pistons. So what I need to do now is go into Hauptwerk, in this keyboard, 
reset my MIDI. I guess, Jerry, I have got a MIDI reset on here, but it doesn't seem to work. Go to MIDI ports, open up that, force us out to recheck all of the MIDI connections, come out of that, and I have access to my divisionals again. So that's one cipher. Let's try again, shall we? I was doing actually quite well there. I was quite pleased with how that was going. Did play one, uh, one wrong chord, so this will now give me the chance to correct that wrong chord because it's actually behind behind the candle holder. I couldn't see what the notes were. That's my excuse anyway. Hi, Trevor. Um, did you bring the cipher with you? Keep keep your ciphers to yourself, dear boy. <laughs> Let's try again. Okay, now I don't have any action on the keyboard. There we go. So this is why often uh, I'm a bit nervous about being live, doing recitals, that sort of thing. But honestly, this is the reason. So now you've seen it live. Third time lucky.
And amazingly, we got through that without the organ uh, doing its um, funky fairground type disco dance. All of the lights come on and it has a bit of a field day. Very strange, very strange indeed. Viscount are going to come out actually and um, to give the organ a bit of a service, a bit of um, a bit of TLC. So I'll make this into a feature video uh, in, the, in the coming um, weeks. It'd be really interesting to have them look over the organ to see um, what the issues are and actually bring it back to, not back to life, but you know, put, put it through a very good service uh, by its creators. I think that'd be, uh, it's really good for an organ to do that. And this is, as you guys know, it's, this is organs from the 90s. And an organ like this, today, if you were going to buy Viscount's latest model with three manuals and a very similar stop um, disposition, would cost you within the region of about 40,000 um, pounds. Translate that into US dollars, and that would be, I don't know, someone will do it for me instantly. But 40K is a lot of money, actually, for an organ. Um, but this is what this is basically what this organ would have cost back then. Um, actually, Viscount are now creating organs to a higher specification. They're using higher quality parts. Um, and I mean, this is this this, this is one, this organ is wonderful, isn't it? I would have loved to have had this in my house when I was in the nineties, when I was uh, 10, 11, 12, You know, it, it would have been a dream come true. So I'm not at all complaining about the organ. It's wonderful, but it hasn't had any any work done to it since the nineties. Imagine having a car and driving it for thirty years. Um, never having it serviced, just filling it up with fuel, putting water in it, if you remember to. Um, this is a, that, that's basically what we're doing with this organ. We're just driving it without giving it any um, servicing. So it, it's, it's, there's no wonder really why it's starting just to have hiccups. I, I don't feel across at it at all. It's, it's doing extremely well. But what, du dusted you mean? Well, yeah, Caroline just uh, shouted from the, from the heavens. It's only been cleaned twice, but you can clean it, you can dust it as many times as you'd like. That's not going to make any difference to the, uh, to the internal components of the instrument. Uh, so this is one of the reasons why we need to get this new organ quickly, isn't it? There you go, $55,000. That's quite a lot of money, actually, isn't it, for an organ? Um, so this, this is what, this is what this, this, an organ like this costs uh, nowadays. So let's go into the next hymn. Let's just hope. We haven't had any organ music yet. This is ridiculous. We need to have an organ piece. So get suggesting um, organ music, please. Be good to have an organ piece. Ro, R-O, this one is for you. God is, God is working his purpose out. Now I wonder, I'm gonna have a quick look in this hymn book for this hymn because I think it's laid out better with the, um, each, word, each verse has a different amount of syllables and um, fitting the music to the words is actually quite challenging. So 495 in NEH, it's actually a bit, no, it's actually no, no better at all, frankly. Uh, we'll just have to see how we get on. So uh, we'll have four verses of this one, if you don't mind, uh, row, um, because it's quite long and actually we've just a bit, lost a bit of time because of the organ cipher. So here we go. God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year.
Right, we're just going to have a piece by um, Henry Purcell, which has been requested by Mark. Oh, hang on, I need to get the iPad ready. It keeps turning off. There we go. Um, and it's called Rondu, and it's been transcribed um, for organ solo. It's actually, it's the main theme used in the um, the Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra by Benjamin Britten. You'll know it is quite a famous tune. And we've also had requested a piece by Herbert Howell, so I'll be very, very happy to play that um, later on. And so that's the Master Talus's Testament. A wonderful piece, a wonderful piece. Very quiet and very lyrical before um, crescendoing to a wonderful climax towards the end, ending very quietly. But, but, but let's just have this now. Eddie King, unsurprisingly, has asked for something baroque. Um, so um, I think this will do nicely. Henry Purcell, 1680, so 1658 to 1695. And as I say, it's been requested specifically um, by Mark. So Mark, um, I hope this is okay for you. There we go. Um, very well known piece uh, by Henry Purcell um, from the, um, how do you say this? Ab Abdilzer. This is where my dyslexia is really not helping at all. It's the A B D Abdilzer. Sweet. Help me out. Spell that out phonetically for me, and that will be really, really helpful. Um, you know, I have nightmares when it comes to um, even. Uh, 
like reading, I'm, I did French at school, so I'm French is actually, I actually find German to, easier to speak because German is more, I mean, English is a very Germanic language. Uh, French, I find hard to get the vowels in the right sort of order. Um, but it's, it's seeing words like, like um, uh, I can't, I, I, I struggle with that. That's, how, that's where dyslexia for me comes really unstuck. If I cover, cover up the A and the B, so I've got laser, delaser, abdelaser. There you go. That's phonetically said out loud, abdelaser, but it doesn't sound right to me. So I'm going to say help. How do I pronounce it? Actually, so it's quite a, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge, you know, playing music and um, uh, playing music with dyslexia. It's, it, does, it does get in the way of um, reading music and, uh, you know, smoothly and efficiently. It, it does, it, it, it not just, it doesn't just affect words, it affects uh, vision and processing information. Perhaps one day I'll do a video on it and explain how how I find it um, holds me back. And you know, I don't think there's any. Uh, I've not seen anyone talk about dyslexia and music before. Anyway, so Francis, let's have a listen to "Jesus Reigns" by Terrors. Now, N E H one hundred and twelve. Um, this is a good hymn. This is a. This is a, for some reason this brings back memories of being um, uh, a chorister. We used to have it quite a lot. And the organist would always ask, the director of music would always ask the organist to tran uh, transcribe it, tran uh, transpose it down, a, a, t a tone from a C into B flat. But I'm not going to do that today. Um, it does mean in the ad lieu at the end, you have to go all the way up to a high F, but you can do that quite easily. Um, in C major, it does mean that we have the bottom C on the pedal board. So we keep it in C. Jesus lives, thy terrors now, can O death no more appall us uh, for Francis.
this, it's, it, it, it can't play that here and not have that bottom C. It's far better in C major than it is in B flat, I think. Okay, you're right. Yeah, okay, fine. right, good. You just changed the order, that's all. Yeah. No, I haven't. I'm doing. Oh, yeah, well, can you find me ELW, please? Oh, oh yeah, it's on the table. Well, it's no good over there, is it? <laughs> um, so, okay, well, I'll play that one then. I'll, I'll play that one. It's number uh, 396. Right. You've given me 547. Oh, that's because that's coming later. <laughs> what, what, what am I doing now? No, it's not, no, what do you mean? I want, I want, I want, I want Spirit of Gentleness. So it's 396. Well, why have you turned to this number? Because coming later. <laughs> All right, so we need to be slick. We need to be slick at this. People have expectations. We need to be slick. All right, Spirit of Gentleness. Okay, we need to be gentle in here and, and calm and poised. This is what people expect, okay? Ciphers are one thing. Come on, you're getting, you're getting distracted now. You're getting distracted. Let's see what I have to put up with. <laughs> but if it's not the cats, it's um, Caroline causing chaos. Caroline's a captain of chaos. Anyway, where are we up to? I've completely lost where we are now. Glenn, 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 this one is for you. Um, spirit of gentleness, uh, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness stir me from placidness wind wind on the sea so that's the refrain and then the verse okay there are four verses as well so i need to make sure i play all verses and the refrain this is from the elw this is the um, evangelical lutheran worship you guys over in the states will uh, probably know this hymn book far better than i do let's have a go then shall we Let's see how we get on with it. I don't know this one at all. The music is by uh, James Manley, and he also uh, wrote the words as well. Born in 1940.
Sorry about that, Glenn. And um, we've actually just cut that to him uh, short by one verse because I just didn't want to um, carry on under the, um, obviously under the scenario. For some reason, thank you, Hugo. The organ also decided to transpose itself, <laughs> which is fun, wasn't it? it decided to transpose upper tone um, halfway through that. So hopefully we're now back in concert pitch. Although this organ in Alessandria is um, actually really sharp. Did you know that? If I play this A here, that actually is a really sharp A. It's not quite an A sharp, but it's probably a quarter, a quarter tone. Uh, sharp than where, um, than where it should be. So, uh, uh, yeah, so that was a one, another cipher. Only two ciphers today. Are we going to make three? I hope not. I really hope not, because it really is off, very off-putting and very distracting, isn't it, to virtual church? It really uh, ruins the flow. So we need to get this resolved. Should we go into NEH and go into number, four, number 487? Um, now, this is a hymn that I don't necessarily know very well. It's in NEH. It's arranged by uh, Bach. It's a melody and bass by Bach, actually. A Laus Deo. You, living Christ, our eyes behold amid your church appearing, all girt about your breast with gold and bright apparel um, wearing. Uh, this has come in from Story Angel. Hello, Story. Another one of our patrons. So thank you for your... Uh, for your support. Three verses, only three verses, um, and let's find a suitable um, baroque, barky type uh, sound. This organ does that sort of uh, registration really well, doesn't it? So, three verses of you, you, living Christ, our eyes behold amid your church appearing.
We're going to stay in NEH uh, 458. Um, and Henk, who, despite being in the, over in the Netherlands, always requests really rock solid hymns from here. You know what I mean, but traditional um, hymns, you know, sort of stiff upper lip hymns. The ones which I like, basically. Um, and he's asked for, the Lord my pasture shall prepare and feed me with a shepherd's care. His presence shall my wants supply and guard me with a watchful eye. The tune is called Surrey. It's by Henry Carey. And the uh, words are by Joseph Addison. So Hank is one of our uh, patrons. He's been in the community for a very long time. I think probably since about the beginning. Um, has a twin brother as well, who also um, tunes in. Martin's and camping at the moment. He's here today. Martin is camping at the moment, and he's here today. So good to have you with us whilst camping. Great. Um, so four verses of this, I think. Yes, four verses. And um, it's, it's the words are a paraphrase of Psalm 23. So um, actually, it's worth, if you've got any H to hand, it's worth, um, or another hymn book, it's worth finding. Um, because there the, were the rather more words than um, originally in Psalm 23. Um, so it's actually, he's, Joseph um, Addison has um, developed and embellished the original um, Psalm. I was just looking at um, verse 4 with the, um, Though in the paths of death I tread, with gloomy horrors overspread, my steadfast heart shall fear no ill, for thou, O Lord, art with me still. Thy friendly staff shall give me aid and guide me through the dreadful shade. So it was just rather added some trimmings to the, um, to, the, to, the, to the nooks of the original psalm, hasn't he? So, Hank, let's have a go at this one. Thank you for requesting this. That's lovely. Um, uh, well, here we go. It's called Surrey.
Thank you very much, Hank. That was a really wonderful hymn. I haven't played that for a while, actually, and it's really nice to play. Did you follow the words? I hope you did. Um, some really wonderful words in that. Um, it's really, it's nice uh, as an organist, um, you know, we have to read the music, but it's, it's really important that we glance over to the words as often as we can for various reasons, you know, to word paint, uh, which you know I like to do, but also to uh, see what the words are doing, where the uh, commas are, where are people going to breathe, is there a comma at the end of the line? If there isn't a comma, should we go through to the next line without a break? That's really important. Um, good choirs and good congregations will go on onto the next line if there's no comma. So you need to look, keep an eye out for that. Great, thank you very much, Hank. Right, I, need, we need, uh, I don't know whether um, you've, I'm just going to remind you, but I don't know whether you have already, but we need to have an organ voluntary. I don't have one planned yet. So um, get suggesting um, organ pieces for the voluntary. And if, if, you say, if, you, if you suggest something that I think is a really good idea, then we'll have it. Um, I just want to ask you another question, which you can answer in the live chat. Um, I just want to know, guys, what virtual church, we do virtual church every week, whether it's uh, live or pre-recorded, and it's been going every week uh, for a long time, for over a year. Uh, I just want to know quite simply, what is your favorite thing about virtual church? It just, I'm not going to give you any, um, you know, any clues. It's not a trick question at all. I just want to know what you like about it. Just one thing, what's your favorite thing about VC? So ELW547, what is it sent forth? By God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from his dwelling take leave. The supper is ended. Oh now be extended the fruits of this service in all who believe only two verses but actually the verses are quite long um but what should we use for this let's use a what haven't we had what sort of sound haven't we had we haven't had the gamba uh, yet and i know that because i to engage the gamba stop i have to use this keyboard because i haven't got space on this organ for it so gamba is now engaged what should we use with the gamba on the on the on the grand uh, organo? Let's use the uh, the other eight foot. Let's create a really warm sound, and on the let's accompany it with just the two flutes, one on this swell or the recitativo, and then one on the coupled down to the one on the positivo. Two flutes are going to accompany that gamba. Thank you very much, by the way, Katrina, for your donation. And thank you, you always donate every week and it's really, really appreciated. It is obviously going to go towards the new organ. And um, as you've seen today, it can't come soon enough. Um, I'm really, really excited. It will um, put BIS into a whole new chapter um, and it will just really enhance the content uh, tenfold. Um, really, really excited. Um, we, we, it's arriving, fingers crossed, in November. So blimey, that's, we're in August now. August, September, October, just over three months, it'll be here and I'll be pushing it a lot and talking um, to you guys about it, about its design, its development, basically bringing you um, on the journey as much as possible. Because it's, it's our organ, isn't it? It's not just mine at all. I'm the custodian of the organ, um, but it's a shared instrument for, for many people around the world. So who is this for then? This is uh, for a perv in India. Um, and again, so my pronunciation of English words is bad enough, let alone um, foreign names. So I'm really sorry if um, any name that I pronounce is incorrect. Here we go. Uh, sent forth by God's blessing.
a sort of a hymn tune that really takes me back to my um, uh, school days, you know. Um, this is called... Is there a carol? Is it called the Ash Grove? Really, that just... I think that's, that's how I know it. Is, it, is it. is that right? This is a good thing about live chat, and actually you, you are only about three or four seconds behind live. Um, so let me know quickly as you can. Is that right, the Ash Grove? Right, where are we going to next then, guys? So I think that's a really important um, thing to, uh, to know, actually. I asked you a minute or two ago, what's your favorite thing about VC? If you want to let me know on the email, if you want to let me know privately, that's absolutely fine. Um, what would you like to see more of? You know, what, uh, what, what, what brings you back to virtual church? What makes you want to come back? Um, is, there some, is there a particular, an organ or, you know, a particular season? What, what makes you want to listen in, into virtual church? I think that, that's really important to me. Um, you, listening to your feedback is one of the most crucial uh, things I can do to build the channel and to uh, basically give you guys what you want. I can I, I could give you what I want to give you, um, but that wouldn't be any good to anyone. This is a, a really favourite thing for me about BIS is the community, the BIS community. I'm part of the community, just uh, just um, just as all of you guys are as well so it's a, it's a shared thing so it's it's all about um, you know having this shared music this shared interest this common interest but what is it specifically that brings you back to vc on a weekly basis so you've told me hopefully what your favorite thing is perhaps it's the same thing uh, but what is it that you want to see more of and what brings you back um i know it's not my waffle <laughs> It might be, but I, I doubt that very much. Um, listen, this next hymn is Like a River Glorious is God's Perfect Peace. I'll try that again. Like a River Glorious is God's Perfect Peace. Over all victorious in its bright increase. Perfect yet it floweth, fuller every day. Perfect yet it groweth, deeper all the way. Um, it's called Why Valley. And it's by James Mountain, who, who I think was either born in or died in 1876. It's not really helpful. It just gives a date. 1876. Perhaps it was composed in 1876. I don't know. Perhaps he had his favourite meal in 1876. I don't know what 1876 means, basically. Um, and it's been requested by Benjamin. Now, I need to say thank you very much to Benjamin. Benj I don't know whether you're listening live or not. Um, but you probably will be listening back and I know you will because you've given me the past few weeks worth of um, time stamps and track lists. It's, it's so important. It's so much appreciated um, that you guys, someone that we have uh, a track list of all the hymns and organ pieces um, in the description and so, so you can jump around to your favourite hymn. And Benjamin has um, given me the past, I think, two weeks worth of uh, time stamps. So I really, really appreciate that. So this is uh, sp especially for, for Benjamin, who's requested this, this hymn. Only three verses, and it looks like it's not a familiar one to me. So I'll, I'll assume people don't know it as well. What should we use? Let's, use, let's just try using the... We haven't used... I'll tell you what stuff we haven't used, and I have to use this again. The Vox Humana on the swell. Let's use the Vox Humana. We haven't had that stop yet today. Accompanied by... It's only a... Hmm, what could we accompany that with? Limited. We're limited. Perhaps the flute on the positive. Yeah, let's just try that. See what that sounds like. So this is the Vox Zoom one. I won't use a tremolant. Perhaps I'll bring it on halfway through. <laughs> um, like a river glorious is God's perfect peace. That's P-E-A-C-E, -E, by the way, rather than P-E-I-C-E. -E.
Thank you very much, Benjamin, uh, for um, suggesting, requesting that particular hymn. And also thank you again for uh, your effort in putting together the track list. It's, it's really, really, uh, really appreciated. Thank you so much. If anyone else would like to do it this week, um, please feel, do feel free. I, just, I need to know the title of the hymn, the first, uh, the first line of the hymn, and the timestamp. And then we can add it into the uh, video's description. We're going to have this uh, hymn now. This, this will be a final hymn. Um, it's for Steve Martin, and it um, is Abide With Me, Fast Falls the Even Tide. And I'll just um, quote um, Stephen here. So Stephen's um, sister Cheryl is in her final days due to a brain tumour. She has assurance of life in Christ and looks forward to joy in his presence. Um, so Stephen has asked for um, eventide, abide with me, fast falls the eventide, on behalf of his sister Cheryl. So this is very much uh, for you and uh, my thoughts and prayers um, are with you, with your sister, and of course, all of your family. You know how I play this, I hope you don't mind. This is, this is my way. I, I think this hymn is a very, um, it's, it's, it's a, an, an assuring hymn, life affirming the way the, um, you know, verse four ends with, I fear no foe with thee at hand. So with you on my side, I have nothing to worry about. Um, Ill, ills have no weight. No tears, no bitterness. Where is death's sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. Um, totally, totally appropriate for Cheryl's awful uh, situation. And then uh, the final verse. Uh, Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O oh Lord, abide with me. Personally, it's a very, uh, towards the end particularly, it's a very positive um, hymn. Um, you know, with, with Christ by your side, you have nothing to worry about, basically. That's a really... Um, a reassuring thing, isn't it? It's one of the most reassuring things about um, uh, Christianity and, and other religions. It's having um, that re reassurance that you have someone there to look after you. And I think this hymn is is all about that. Anyway, four, uh, five verses of this wonderful hymn. This will be the final hymn that we'll have two organ volunteers. I know you'd like your, uh, you'd like to get your money's worth. Speaking of which, thank you very much to those people who have just donated. I did see uh, on the live chat um, some colour in the live chat, which means the donation has just come in. Didn't see who they were from. Apologies for that, but thank you very much. All going towards the new organ. So, Stephen, here we go.
A wonderful hymn, isn't it? A really, really wonderful, special hymn. Many, many ways. Okay, let's go on to the first of tonight's voluntaries then, shall we? So, we're gonna have two pieces. Um, you these have both been requested. Um, Bobby's come to celebrate International Cat Day. She's probably come to take us offline. Come on. The problem is, Bobby, I know what you're like. I know what you're like. You will walk over the keyboard, won't you? Hey, I didn't know it was International Cat Day until someone threw that camera over there told us. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Are you going to go on the organ somewhere? Why don't you go? Why don't you go over here? There's a bit of a space there for you. You can go. Over there. Oh my God. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. If you stay there, you're absolutely fine. Okay, I need to play something very special, very, very quiet, so you can't go walking on the keyboard, okay? She's going to walk in front of the camera. So, uh, thank you for that. Can you? <laughs> there we go. If, if, if it wasn't International Cat Day, then she would not get away with that. She would not be allowed to do that. The first piece that you guys are going to hear tonight is um, the wonderful piece um, by Herbert Howells. This is probably one of his best uh, pieces um, and probably um, his most, most played. It's a very usable piece um, for uh, liturgical use. It's, it works as a pre-service um, piece because it's quiet. It has a uh, crescendo that ends quietly. It is Master Talis's Testament. And there's every reason to think that he wrote this um, after hearing um, the performance, the first performance, the premiere of the wonderful piece by Vaughan Williams, um, Fantasia on a Theme by Thomas Tallis. It's quite similar, actually. It sort of grounds around the key of G minor. Um, doesn't really stray far from that. Um, I, I think Howells was inspired by that performance uh, to write this. And then we'll have another piece after this. So this is um, Herbert Howell's Master Talis's Testament. He's very specific about registration in this piece, so I need to make sure I can do this correctly. Um, so bear with me a moment while I just set one or two things up. Well, not set it up, but you know, pull things out.
A really, really wonderful piece by Howells. I hope you agree. One of my favorites, actually. And you really need to know um, the organ upon which you're playing uh, because there are some very specific requests. Um, for example, uh, there's one section where he wants uh, an eight and four solo on the pedal. So you need to find something which will be loud enough uh, to balance against the, the, um, the manual work um, luckily, we know Alessandro pretty well now, and it works rather well. well you know, one of the best things about uh, Hauptwerk, having these um, wonderful organs at uh, our disposal, is the ability to play, let's just stick with English, because obviously I'm English and uh, in England, play English music on foreign organs. So playing a very English piece of Powell's on an Italian organ is something that I think is quite rarely heard. You know, uh, playing, people play Bach on all instruments around the world. That's fair to say, isn't it? Uh, but you wouldn't necessarily go uh, to France, play a Cavaille Col, and play an English piece upon it. You wouldn't necessarily do that, because it, but yet, why not? The, the, these pieces sound utterly incredible on these, uh, these organs. So that's one of my favorite things about Hauptwerk. I think Howells uh, really comes to life on um, organs like this, actually. It does sound wonderful on English organs as well, there's no doubt, you know, um, the organ of King's College Cambridge with that wonderful Harrison and the wonderful acoustic is the, the ideal organ for this sort of music, no doubt. Uh, but, you know, you hear it on uh, Alessandria, it's, this has a different sort of uh, quality, a different colour, different sort of timbre. One more piece. This is a final piece. This is a this this uh, was requested by a few of you. This is the Toccata by um, Eugene Gigou, the one in B minor. Uh, should we play this? I don't think we need to play it too authentically, do we? We can have a bit of fun with it, shall we? So he doesn't he doesn't want sixteen foot on the swell. Fair enough. Uh, so we'll start on the positive, then uh, going on to the great. So here we go. This is the Jigu Takata. I think you might know this one. Should we try a different angle? Should we try this, the top angle for this final piece?
Yashigu is famous toccata in B minor, which I think you can play if you're up for a challenge. I think that is, despite what people say um, on the on the on the uh, in the comments of my accessible organ video, organ music video, I think this is one of the easier toccatas. I play a lot of them, um, and I'm in a I'm in a fair position to say this is one of the easier ones actually. The hardest, one of the hardest, one of the, one of the hardest toccatas, by the way, I think is the Drufle toccata from the suite. Um, not wanting to be upstaged at all. You don't want to be upstaged, do you? Don't worry, you're never upstaged. You're never upstaged. You're a top cat, you are. You're a top cat. Look, you're on the screen twice here. Look, you're on the screen twice. International Cat Day, we should give you some fish for, um, for supper. How about some real fish? Do you want, some, do you want, some, do you want a treat for supper? Where, you, where do you want to go? Don't walk on the keyboard, otherwise it'll take us off air. Thank you. And it wouldn't be for the first time. Have we got someone else? Oh, he's, yes, he's doing his Hugo things. <laughs> Dri Is he's, he? He's dribbling. <laughs> Two voluntaries. Um, I'm not sure how many hymns we have there. I think that will do for today, won't it? Next week, um, all 220 odd of you, um, I'm sure you're all aware, it says on the screen, but please uh, do tune in to the organ marathon next week. Um, it's so much of a marathon that I'm gonna have to do it over two days. So this is the fourth organ marathon that I've done. Uh, the first organ marathon was just uh, playing the organ for 12 hours. Um, that was a walk in the park, really, to play anything for 12 hours. Second one was a complete NEH, so I played that uh, cover to cover. Um, the third organ marathon I did was all of those last verse reharmonizations by our favorite Noel Rawsthorne. Uh, and then the fourth um, organ marathon next week will be a complete performance of this. This is actually just only half of it. This is the, uh, the 1982 hymnal. Um, full of some really, really amazing hymns. A lot of hymns that we will know here in England, um, but with it being an American publication, lots and lots of American hymns as well, which would be less familiar to us. Um, and look, oh, look what I've just turned to, your favorite hymn, God of Our Fathers, who's on mighty hand, with the, um, with the fanfares as well. So you'll hear the fanfares, yes. Now you'll tune in, you'll hear the fanfares in that, in that hymn. Uh, we'll start at about one o'clock in the afternoon UK time. Please um, check your local time zone. Hopefully this will be the last, thank you Hugo, this will be the last sort of uh, fundraiser required for the new organ. Um, and I'll let you know next week how much we need to raise. I think we need to work it out basically. Uh, so until next week, until next weekend, um, Oh, by the way, one more thing just to say, um, we are now into the swing of the relay race, the Friday music relay. Do you get, do you understand the concept? Okay, so the first leg of the relay was Graham Twist's tuba flourish. Uh, Graham Twist is now handing over that baton um, to someone else for the second leg of the relay race. <laughs> carnage, carnage. Um, so what will the second leg be of that for the relay race? It's completely up to you. So get voting on Graham's video. There's already quite a few votes for a piece by Bach. So it's up to you what I play in the second leg of the relay race. Uh, so that's on Friday. That will come out on Friday, whatever you choose. Look, Hugo's here. Uh, he was playing the organ earlier. He's playing far better than I played tonight. Um, we will all say cheerio, won't we? Cheerio. <laughs> Bye everyone, cheerio, Bye. take care and um, stay safe. Goodbye. Hugo, you're getting rather heavy, my dear boy. Bye-bye. <laughs>